Hey guys, I got a package in the mail today, and it should be my new boat. I bought a Vitality FT009, and the reason for it is because I had bought these last year, the FT007s, and I was really impressed with them. For the price, I was very impressed. So I wanted to go a little bit bigger and a little faster and stuff like that, and uh, I want to try something else for this season. Um, it's only March, but I'm already starting to get into, you know, flying the quads outside, and uh, of course, um, the water, the you know, the ponds and all that are starting to thaw. So I'm starting to think about boats and all that stuff. So um, what I wanted to do was have the boats here, get them set up, and all that, so that they're here in time because they come from overseas. And uh, I have them all set up and ready for the first uh, um, chance I can to get out there when everything's thawed out. So these FTW07s were great. The battery time was great. The range was great. They sounded great. And I was very surprised by the speed. And I uh, never had anything really break on them uh, to speak of. And so I figured, why not go a little bit bigger version of the exact same boat? So we're going to do a quick unboxing um, and see what it's all about. Kind of anxious to uh, go out and try this because it is so much more bigger. I think these have three 40 size motor uh, in, in them, whereas this one has a like, regular 540 size motor. Uh, and of course, it should be about the length of, of this box, which is, you know, quite a bit bigger than those ones. And in the end, I got those for spares or for the, uh, the younger kids to play with. So I figured I'd try this one and see if I really like it before I get into uh, anything more serious where they're, you know, hundreds of dollars. So if this thing is anything like the 007s, I should be quite happy. Now I do have extra batteries coming for it just so that, you know, if you're out at the beach or whatever and, you know, where are you going to charge them at? So I might as well have an extra pack for each one of the um, boats. And I got another one coming uh, that's still coming yet. They shipped them separately so me and my son can, you know, fly around out there it makes it a little more more interesting in the water than uh, just cruising around in circles. So it looks like they shipped it in the box instead of some weird packaging. So I'll be able to show you how it looks in display. And there it is. Now hopefully you can see that. Some reflections. I'll take it out here in a second. And uh, let's see what we got here. I came prepared for sure for all these wire ties and tape on here. They have got it nice and tight in here. Plus the box is damaged down here a little bit. Jeez. There we go. Okay. Wow. Now, I think the only colors they offered in the 007s were these two colors, whereas this one, FT009, was, uh, I think, like a... It's like a copper color I believe almost copper reddish color and of course this this nice uh, emerald looking green so it looks really nice and I'll have to look up more information on these to see if they sell right uh, like these ones do or not got the adapter to charge them got the little boat stand there's the other part of the boat stand that goes the same way as these. Extra prop. And a couple of nose cards apparently. These ones only give you one. And transmitters inside. Here's the 
instruction manual. Real basic setup guide. Let's get this apart. Now that I've lost my razor blade. I want to make a big mess of the styrofoam. Dogs are getting a little freaked out. <laughs> we had one bail on us. Wow, this thing is heavy uh, compared to the other one. Let's see if we can get this transmitter out. Yeah, that should be it. So the transmitter looks a little bit different right here, but it still has the same flip up right here for, um, let's see, it's just as hard as the other one. Yeah, kind of, to get up. And that has your, your throttle trims and all that in here. Your turn two trim, it basically, it basically is your, your steering trim. And then of course your uh, on and off switch, and it's covered inside, it has your status LEDs. A little shark fin. And the, the actual wheel on here for steering, it feels really smooth and um, the returnability on there is really nice. You know, close to a hobby grade one, the rest of it feels kind of cheap, but of course there's no batteries in it. So, and it's got a screw in the bottom just like the other ones. It's got a nice little chrome uh, wheel on here though. So let's build this stand so it can hold the boat up for me real quick. Just slides in. This one's the same thing. Goes a certain way. Okay. All right. Yep, so there it is, and you can see how much bigger it is compared to these other ones. Let me put it in the front of it, kind of line the back up. Let's get this guy out of the way. Whoa. And you can just see how much freaking bigger it is. Wow, and this is getting more into uh, a serious boat that you can really have some fun with and uh, not be tossed around by the waves so much, maybe. I love that the decal's in the front right here. I mean, and the emerald green is really nice. And I'll just do a 360 here. See that that prop in the back is quite big compared to the other ones too. Proportional. I love that color. That color is beautiful. Show you the difference. So, we'll pull the cover off here. Well, yeah, it's got regular uh, turn lock in the back here, same as the other one. And then you should be able to lift up on here and then take it off. So you get access to the rest of your stuff in here. And it's got a couple more locks on here. Maybe they're undone already for shipping. They got little lock and unlock symbols on here. I just gotta actually read your you know directions. Okay, they're all locked. It's like a secondary cover. This one this is the one that actually has the uh, foam seal for all the electronics in here. And wow, this thing looks amazing compared to the other one already. The little steering uh, servo in here for the rudder or whatever, um, that looks about the same size as the other one. The pack looks quite a bit bigger, and uh, what is this one? This one's a 2S, 1500 milliamps, so we should get some good run time, and then it looks like a regular 540 size motor, I would say, that's what the specs call for, and it has the water cooling unlike the other one, so that's nice, and we worry about that so much. This one does not have an additional cooling fan right here like that one does. I guess the they're thinking the you know the water cooling is plenty. It's got regular connections right here for the uh, receiver and all that. Those are the JST connectors or whatever they are, for tuba style. And then your 
power connector right there that goes to your ESC, which is in the front part of the boat right here. Now this one, the actual battery in here, the old one, well, in that one, the 007, it, it slid around there, it's very loose in there, whereas this one's like size just for uh, this compartment, so it really is, it holds it down here really nice and flop around, and you can see it takes a little bit to get it out of there. So that's really cool, it's got the little siphon right here for the, uh, the water cooling, it's really cool. And the way it feels on here, the magnets are pretty darn strong. You know, they resist me turning pretty good, so we'll have to see how much power this thing has. Um, hopefully it has the same realistic sound as the 007s. That'd be nice, because that was really cool to have them out there. It's just it's part of the excitement. It's kind of like nitro. Um, it is exciting, more exciting than electric, you know, because of the sound and all that noise and all that, it's more realistic and all that. Now this one, just like the 007s, has the water sensor right here to enable the, you know, the prop back here to run so you don't hurt yourself when you pull it out of the water. Although these still, uh, you know, they have contact. Um, when you initially pull out water, I've noticed on the other one. And they got little channels in here and stuff like that for the wiring for the servos and all that and it's kind of like glued down in there it's kind of nice the wire routing is actually pretty decent inside of there but man is this thing even without that battery in there it's it's got some heft to it let me see these have no batteries too yeah it's got some real heft to it compared to this one so this is going to be zipping along and uh, a lot of these other ones out there to uh See how they go also. Now the reason I bought these early and it's only March is because I want to take these on a, uh, a family vacation and uh, take them out. I'm going into the ocean so hopefully you know the salt water won't be an issue. Um, maybe I can find a fresh water area too to take them to and to see how well they um, power around compared to the 007s. I'll bring one of those and one of these and I'll probably do a running video of that so you can, you know, kind of compare the difference. Maybe get one of those for your kid and a 009 for yourself. So overall, it's basically a bigger version of the 007. I'm, I'm, I really like the way it looks, uh, especially all the wiring in here. It just seems more uh, mainstream and hobby grade compared to the 007s. It was kind of like, it was weird, I don't know. And uh, it's got, you know, the thicker gauge wires and all that in here. So I'm really impressed so far, especially with this paint job. It's, uh, it's very impressive. The emerald green, I love it. And uh, I have to put the little nose cones on there before I ruin anything. The way I drive. So that is about it. I just want to let you guys know, um, I actually got a email recently, I bought these from Banggood, and I think they're bought them for $57 shipped, you know, out the door. Um, but these ones at T-Mart, which is another place I, I found online, and uh, supposedly they have U.S. warehouses they ship from. Um, they were actually selling this one in an email special for $49.99. Um, I'm pretty sure it came RTF like this one with the battery and their controller. Uh, I didn't go any further because I already bought a second one. Um, it just hasn't arrived yet. It should be a red one. And uh, so that, that, that's something, I mean, I bought these. These were $49, you know, back in the day. So for something this big and, and, and uh, this size motor and a big old 2S pack like this for 50 bucks. Uh, I would say either way, it's an awesome, awesome deal. So be on the lookout for some running videos of this. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to get pretty crazy because I'll have um, you know these two small ones and I'll have these uh, two big ones out, out in the water together. 
and uh, it'll be like a regular old boat race out there, jumping waves and jumping each other, and the dogs chasing it and all that stuff. Once we get into the summer here and we get some warmer water, I'll bust them all out and uh, should have some great videos showing off just how awesome these are for uh, you know 50 bucks. So, so that is all for now. Um, I'm gonna be having uh, a couple of videos out on flying the Blade 350. Also, uh, once the it, it's warming up, it's in the 50s, but the wind is just out of control. So I don't want to chance it. And uh, I took it out today real quick just to see. It's probably 30 some mile per hour winds, and I just want to see how good that GPS hold can do. I didn't put it way up in the sky. And I was very impressed. It was all like this, you know. I was fighting it because the wind kept dying down, you know, whipping up. But uh, it didn't stray off, you know, down the road. So uh, it was basically within a five-foot column, um, side to side of where I took off from. So um, it, it's it, that was that was impressive because those winds were unflyable, and uh, it it just sat there basically in that column, that GPS lock column, and you know just kept correcting itself. So, um, tomorrow it should be warm, sunny, and, uh, and um, hopefully not too windy so I can get some actual flying videos and we'll go through the different modes and I'll go out to that field and I'll be a little safer out there compared to around here. And uh, my GoPro is actually in the shop right now. I sent it in for warranty. I did the firmware update on there and that thing just killed it no response at all none of the steps they gave me so that's gone so no chance to do an interference video on that I bought the copper foil tape for that and it's um, it, there's no GoPro to test it you know so when I do I'll do you know one layer two layer three layer four layer and we'll test the GPS uh, interference on the blade and then uh, of course I can strap it onto there and take off and hopefully get some nice shots Especially the new firmware they got coming out for it. They got a photography mode for it. So everything's a little more, you know, soft when it corrects itself and everything. And you can basically just go up and it'll hold the altitude. You put the stick forward and it'll just follow someone. You know, follow a thing that's going down the road. A dog running or whatever. And it's, it's, it's really cool. So, um... Once they get the GoPro back and up and running, we can start doing all that and going through all that. And that's what I really want to do is get some aerial shots of, uh, you know, from the quad, flying around, looking at stuff, especially from some good altitudes. So we'll uh, get to that as soon as I get the GoPro back, and it should be very interesting to watch.